G'day everyone, my name is Daniel O'Grady and welcome to another Wasabi Cars video. Thank you all very much for joining me and thank you for your comments. And uh, a commenter of note I would like to point out is uh, Mr. Pete Bull. Thank you so much for jumping in and getting involved and uh, taking the time to let me know your opinion. <laughs> much appreciated. Now uh, today's car, what is it? It is a Corny Guppy. Now I have seen some pictures of this car, you know, old pictures on uh, Facebook, you know, sort of doing the rounds lately. So that's interesting that uh, people are, um, you know, diving into the histories of, you know, the JDM scene. Very, very interesting. Now. Um, it was not built by any known manufacturer, so uh, Aichi Kikai Kogyo. Now they've since been absorbed by Nissan Motor Company and uh, the company continues to this day building a, what do they build, a Nissan minivan of some description, I forget the name, and doesn't interest me anyway, <laughs> I mean minivan, modern, uninteresting to me, but um, yeah, so they still exist today as a, um, you know, as a child, child company to Nissan. So there you go guys. Now this particular car, Corny Guppy, was built in 1961 to 1962 and they built 4,645 of these. Quite impressive, yeah? I mean for a car with a short life, back in the day a hand-built car, that sounds impressive to me. Now the engine, very small, 199cc, two-stroke, one-cylinder, 11 horsepower. Uh, automatic transmission that again sounds in, uh, sounds impressive as does the suspension four-wheel independent suspension sounds good yeah for 1961 now unfortunately the car was so light and that, um, that, that that suspension and the road conditions it just didn't allow for the car to be very stable so um, that was one of the reasons why it wasn't such a success now let's check out the outside of the car you know it's so small it really is like a mighty boy of uh, your parents generation a few things that stand out I think um, now in the front there's no engine right the engine is mounted under the uh, uh, in the chassis and behind the seat and you can access the engine via the tray in the back and something that really stands out are those indicators on the side of the car they are just saying hui look at me they almost look like a siren um, the tail lights at the back are pretty minimal and you can see that uh, it has air vents coming in from the side in front of the rear wheels behind the doors suicide doors yeah which was a pretty popular thing in the time back in the day interior very very bare now every example i've seen there seems to be like a missing panel on the passenger side in the dash i don't really know why that is because there is that panel on the on the driver's side you know the ignition key some accessories yeah, but it's just got an ex a, um, what do you call that? Oh my god, I'm forgetting English. Speedometer. That's it, it's a speedometer. Oh my god. And the thing on the dash looks to be an ashtray. <laughs> Pretty important accessory. Back in the day. Oh, and then it's got one of those um, handbrake that you pull from the dash. That, you know, that's where they should be nowadays. Much easier, yeah? Yeah. Okay guys, well I'm going to head off, but thank you all very much once again for joining me. Question of the day. Ah, question of the day relates to my day today because I went to the park and I took some vision of the beautiful cherry blossoms and the blue skies. So rare in Japan. I mean, this, and, and also it's just a cultural, um, it's a cultural event, the cherry blossoms, you know. They, they're in bloom for a very, very short period of time and the rain wipes them out. So to see them really is... is um, it is an impressive thing and uh, you know it sort of goes into that samurai sort of fleeting beauty you know thing and um, it really does tie in with the Japanese culture and the Japanese people so deeply so um, anyway it was nice to see and I'm sort of happy to show you some other aspects of Japanese culture I mean I've been sticking to the cars and uh, there's so much more you know on offer so anyway so what's this question of the day? <laughs> oh, um, what is the question of the day? How can I tie that in? Um, what, with your culture, what is the cultural day that, that really sort of speaks to you? Um, you know, back when I was living in Australia, Australia Day, barbecues, beaches, you know, barbecues with the family at Ironbark Gully in Ferny Grove in Brisbane. Yeah, hot weather. That spoke to me. Anyway, it's all different from me now, okay? 
Anyway, thank you all very much. So what was your cultural day? What's the day? How does it speak to you? I would love to hear, okay guys? I'm gonna head off. I'm struggling with English. I just don't speak enough. I don't speak to English speakers. Oh my God. Excuse me. Okay, so take it easy everyone. See you.